Yesterday, we looked at horizontal projectiles using a, an online simulator. And what we found out are a couple of pieces of information. First of all, acceleration occurs in the vertical direction with projectiles. We do not have horizontal acceleration unless there's some sort of wind or rockets or something like that. Um, we also said that vertical displacement occurs at the same rate as if you just drop an object when something is fired horizontally. So if things fall at the same rate, whether they were fired horizontally or whether they were dropped. And we of course learn that mass is irrelevant. relevant. Um, and so with those three pieces of knowledge, along with one more, that we can separate analysis into vertical and horizontal components, let's try to figure out the range of a horizontal projectile. Now this is, cannon may not look like it's pointing completely horizontally. I can try to edit it just a little bit. There we go. A little more horizontal. This uh, cannon is, uh, let's say, from the barrel of the cannon to the ground, let's say it's about 45 meters high. 45 meters high. And let's say it fires a cannonball at a rate of, I don't know, 8 meters per second. So let's use this, inf this knowledge we have from yesterday to figure out how far it goes. What we know is the cannonball will move at a constant horizontal rate. It will be moving at 8 meters a second horizontally the whole time until it reaches the ground. That means that all we have to do, we have a constant horizontal velocity to figure out the range, is take our velocity and multiply by time. You may recognize this is part of our one half at squared formula, but because there is no horizontal acceleration, all this goes away and we're just left with delta x equals velocity times time. Constant velocity times time gives us the range. But do we have the time? We do not. So first we need to solve for the time. Now, time is a vertical uh, function. As this ball falls, it will occur the same way as if it were just dropped. We don't care about the horizontal motion. We only care about vertical. So let's list our vertical givens. Vertical acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. Vertical initial velocity is zero right because it was fired horizontally none of that velocity is going in the vertical direction and the vertical displacement is negative 45 meters now we can calculate the time delta y equals vit plus one half at squared it's the same formula there is no vertical velocity to start with, right? So delta y is negative 45 equals 1 half negative 10 t squared negative 45 equals negative 5 t squared 45 divided by 5 is 9 equals t squared so t equals 3 seconds. Let's take that 3 seconds and plug it in at our time. Now time is not a vertical thing, it's just, it applies to both vertical and horizontal, so I've not put it in the same column as our vertical stuff. Now we need to examine the horizontal movement of the ball. There's no horizontal acceleration, right? I mean, we can always say the horizontal acceleration will be zero. What about horizontal velocity? Well, the initial horizontal velocity was 8 meters per second. And what we're trying to find is delta x. 
So let's take from our horizontal and plug in to our range formula. Delta x equals the horizontal velocity, which is 8, times the time, which was 3. So delta x will be 24 meters. OK. Let's do another one. Let's say that we have a cliff that is, um, let's see, make the math easy, 80 meters tall. And a ball is kicked off the cliff, and I don't know, let's make it uh, 12 meters per second. So let's once again go through the steps we saw before. Let's write our givens. This time let's put them in a table with a vertical and a horizontal part. We know each time we'll have acceleration, velocity, and displacement. And we can go ahead and fill in vertical accelerations 10 meters per second squared. Horizontally, we'll have acceleration, velocity, and displacement. And we'll go ahead and fill in horizontal acceleration doesn't exist. Well, not without wind or rockets, not in this case. What else do we know? Is this vertical or horizontal velocity? The ball was kicked horizontally off the top of the cliff. Look, it's going to the right. So that is a horizontal velocity. That means the vertical velocity is zero because it was not kicked up or down. And this height, is this delta x or delta y? Well, since it's a height, it must be delta y. And just like that, we filled in our table. So the first thing we need to do is find our missing value, which is time. To do that, we'll use our vertical component. Delta y equals vit plus 1 half at squared. We're using this formula because we have a displacement and acceleration. Negative 80 equals initial velocity was 0, so all this is canceled out, plus 1 half times negative 10 times t squared. I can see the question coming already. Why is this negative 80? Because the ball is going down, and this is a measure of displacement. And remember, displacement involves direction. So negative 80 equals negative 5t squared. 80 divided by 5 is 16. And the square root of 16 is 4 seconds. So let's put that up in our data table. Now to find out range, we're going to take our horizon horizontal velocity and multiply it by the time in the air. So the range equals horizontal velocity, which is 12, times the time, which is 4, 48 meters. Straightforward. So what fundamental ideas do I want you to get from this before we focus on the math? One, all objects, all projectiles accelerate down at about 10 meters per second squared. That means the horizontal velocity doesn't exist. Horizontal velocity doesn't ex or horizontal acceleration doesn't exist in 99.9% .9 of questions. Horizontal velocity does. My my mistake there. Um, horizontal acceleration is not a factor in 99% of our problems. Two. A ra the range of a projectile. is the product of 
the horizontal velocity and the time in the air. And by product, I mean it's the result of multiplying them together, right? Horizontal velocity and the time in the air. A, a projectile of any sort, all we have to do to figure out how far it goes is multiply the horizontal velocity by the time in the air. That means we could work it backwards, right? The range, or if we had the range and the horizontal velocity, we could say, well, if it went 100 meters and its horizontal velocity was 10, 100 divided by 10 would be 10 seconds in the air. We could say, if we had the time in the air as 8 and the range as 24, 24 divided by 8 would give us a horizontal velocity of 3 meters per second. This works either way, right? And mathematically, this is delta x equals vxt, the same thing we were looking at before. And number 3, to find time in the air, from height, all we have to do is use delta y equals vit plus one half at squared. And if it's fired horizontally, that vi will be zero, right? Because this is a vertical equation. And finally, finally, and most importantly, keep vertical and horizontal separate. That's it for today's notes. We'll, of course, uh, be doing more in class today. And I hope you have uh, learned a bit here. And we'll see you in live session.